Hello, this is Marina in Ellie's channel. And today we have a special guest on our channel, Tina. And Tina is a master of bundles. And today we wanted to talk about that. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Tina, we have a couple of questions to you. And the first, like, how did you start selling on Amazon? And what year uh, was it? I started selling on Amazon towards the end of 2014. Um, that's how long I've been selling on Amazon. What got me started was I was already doing eBay. And I was in a lot of Facebook groups, like how you guys are. Of course, there were not as many back then. And um, a lot of the people in the Facebook groups, and this was all eBay sellers, started talking about Amazon and doing this Amazon FBA. I was just kind of listening and following along with what everybody else was doing. I thought, well, I must need to do that too. <laughs> and so that's how I started uh, with my Amazon FBA account. Amazon, it started out um, as just books. And so there was a lot of people selling on Amazon when Amazon was only books. So I can't remember actually how old the Amazon selling platform is. So it had been around. Um, I think more people were really jumping on the popularity of it. Tina, how did you start? What did you start with? Like what model of selling did you get? In 2014, when I very first started, yes. I didn't know what to do. I was so nervous. So. Um, I only really knew what was selling good on eBay. I really started with a few things that I bought at the thrift store that were brand new. Like I had this uh, puzzle. It was a, a map of the United States and it was brand new that I got from the thrift store and I listed it on Amazon as fulfilled by merchant is how I started because I, I, I didn't really know how to do a shipment and I felt like it was a little bit more like eBay. I never sold that puzzle. No. <laughs> <laughs> it never sold, but yeah, that was one of my first things. I, I think I had five items on there. I just remember that puzzle because I thought, oh, this is a good one. And it never sold. So um, <laughs> it, it's just funny, you know, in the beginning, it's a struggle to know what to sell and what to buy. So I just started like everybody else scanning all the things that I could. Um, but I started more with a few thrift store items. So that's where I was already sourcing. Okay. Back then, they didn't have the requirements for the receipts. So thrift stores. No, well, they did and they didn't. So when I, in 2015, when I started getting more of a hang of it and scanning and what have you, I uh, wanted to get ungated. And at the time, the way that you were able to get ungated was much easier. So the way I got ungated at Health and Beauty, it's a sad story for newer sellers, but the way it was then, all you had to do was buy three items of the same thing and you could buy them anywhere. So I would go to Target and I would go to the trial size section, you know, where things are like a dollar. And I bought like three miniature cans of, of mousse for your hair. And I submitted that receipt to Amazon from Target and I got approved. I was ungated because it used to be that easy. Mm -hmm. Amazon has gotten increasingly harder every year that I've been selling. Very hard. Now, even with the mm -hmm. uh, uh, invoices from wholesale, sometimes we're having problems. Like we had one last week with Loctite the brand and mm -hmm. their invoice is directly from a wholesaler, but still they're having trouble locating the wholesaler or seeing their products or I don't know what the problem is. Yeah, that's very frustrating. Sometimes it's just in the way you've annotated your invoice. You know, sometimes there's nothing wrong with it. It's just Amazon can be so particular um, that you really have to find what is that that secret recipe of what it is that they are wanting. Yeah. Tina, how did you get into bundles? I got into bundles um, a few years into Amazon um, from a girl that I used to follow on YouTube who was a fellow eBay seller. And she was one of the eBay sellers who also transitioned into doing Amazon. Nobody was doing bundles at the time except for her. So she had barely been the pioneer of it at that time. And so she was talking about doing bundles and um, I joined her Facebook group. I always loved her YouTube channel. 
And she was just so creative and clever, which spoke to my creative side um, because I've always been creative. I did hair for a living. My mother was an interior designer. So I've always loved creativity. And so bundles just, that was just something I thought, oh, I love this because it was so fun to pair things together and put things together. So I just happened to like it. And um, that was before any of these big bundle gurus that are out there. You know, this was before anybody was talking about doing those things. And so, and they just, they just called it bundles, right? Yes, it's bundles, but to me, it's just really putting together like gift sets or packages of things that go together. And I started off, um, my first bundles were at Halloween, where I was putting together some candy type gift packages. And then um, I finally got a better hang of it when back to school came around because I had been trying it for a few months. And my first bundles weren't great. I didn't sell a lot of them. They were a bit wobbly, so to speak, making the listings and, and because it's new, right? Anything new is hard to learn. And by the time back to school came around, I had found a sweet spot with doing um, themes, notebooks and things for the kids. So I would go into my 99 cent store and whatever the character was that year, the Disney character that was popular, the 99 cent store used to always have them on the school folder, the notebook, you know, some pencils, just on that little back to school aisle. And I would grab the things like, you know, what a kid would normally want and put together these back to school little uh, bundle packs of themed um, character school supplies. Seasonals. And is this still your favorite one? Seasonals versus uh, evergreen? Well, Yes and no. I, I think because seasonals is like the, the cherry on the top, so to speak. You have kind of your baseline that you find that you're making on Amazon with your normal inventory that you sell, be it just like a standalone item or a, an evergreen bundle, whatever your inventory is, it, it doesn't really matter. But you have kind of that baseline that you tend to make every month. So when you add a season into the mix and you get extra things you wouldn't normally have got, it just really bumps up your sales. So, you know, I will see that my sales always spike on the months that have holidays because I like to do those, those seasons and they're, they sell faster. Like if it's a good one, because it's a short window of time that they need to buy it, right? Like we just had Easter. So people are going to hurry up and buy all that because they have to get it now right before Easter. So I always feel like it's a bit of a guarantee of a, of a sales boost. I like them both. I just like them for different reasons. I obviously like my evergreen because I need to make money all year long. I can't, you know, just live off holidays. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely like my items that sell all year long because then I treat them like a replen. Yep. And sometimes not all of my listings are bundles. Um, sometimes my listings are a standalone listing. I just wanted to show everyone what bundles are. And I find I found a couple of examples just to show and ask your opinion. Do you think it's a good one? Pet stuff is always good. Um, I think that this is a nice um, bundle because they're displaying very clearly what you're getting of all of these different flavors of the brand Shiba. And then they were a smart bundler because they have their branding not only on their box, but it looks like also a um, little cat toy well, as their little 10 fun facts about cats. Um, aesthetically, I think this looks like a very nice bundle. Basically, a bundle <clears throat> is when you can use a big, big name brands and combine it with something yours, which is like a filler, which could be like a toy in this scenario. And in this case, nobody can jump on your listing, correct? Generally speaking, yes. Now, um, the things that can be a problem is if that brand Sheba doesn't uh, appreciate you, you know, mm -hmm. maybe calling their brand your name. And this particular seller branded it under the name uh, Generic and not Lara's Bundle. Mm -hmm. um, so, but now, as you know, a lot of people are having problems jumping on existing listings under the brand name generic, even if they don't have special things inside of their listing. Yeah, I just wanted to show several examples. So mm -hmm. this is elite for those uh, 
canned food for do for dogs for cats. And in yes. this scenario, it's two bags of uh, dry cat food, and it's with their special soup, which they branded with their brand name on it. And that bundle makes sense, you know, because you're going to use a cat soup to uh, pull out the cat food. The other day, I had saw a bundle. It was some candy. Uh, for Easter, and this particular seller just put it a, a ballpoint, like an ink pen, in all of their listings, and you know, like something like this, mm -hmm. and it had their name on the ink pen. It's like it. Some of those don't make sense. Like you're just going to put an ink pen with you know two bags of Easter chocolate. It, it. So some people do some things that are just silly, you know, that just that doesn't add or benefit the bundle or the listing at all. What are your favorite categories and what would you recommend to start? What categories to start your first listings? Of all categories are good, honestly. I find them all good. It's just that everybody has a different name for what they look for, right? Like some people really love looking at shoes and clothing and they just love that category. And they don't mind, say, going to Ross and going and touching every clothing and scanning. Other people might find that really tedious. And they don't enjoy it. You know, maybe they really enjoy looking at uh, children's toys. So is toys better than clothing? No. But you're going to have a natural inclination to uh, a section of the store and products that you just enjoy looking at. Or maybe you've had past success with those categories. So um, you feel like you have a little bit of... Uh, knowledge already going into it. So I, I wouldn't say that I would recommend one category over another to anybody. Um, really go with what section of the store do you already like to look in? You know, is it beauty? Is it beauty products? It's always more fun to source things you already have a little knowledge in or that you enjoy looking at. Yeah, I just can't imagine like what bundle can you make in the clothing category? It's like t-shirts and bundle. shorts. You could, I've done bundles and clothing category for really? children. Yeah. In the past, I did really cute bundle for uh, children. I, I had bought a whole bunch of these really cute swimsuits at Carter's for little girls on clearance. And I mean, I bought, I can't remember how many, maybe 80 of them. And I found this really cute summer hat, like a little, little girl bucket hat that um, matched the swimsuit. And I found those at a dollar store. Wow, that is wonderful. Well, it's useful with a, with a swimming suit to have a hat. Yeah, like yeah, and maybe towel. Yeah, and not everything has to be a bundle, right? Like not every listing has to be a this with a that, unless you're wanting to make a bundle. You know, sometimes maybe you find that you sell the children, little girls swimsuits really well. And so maybe that opens up an opportunity for you to look for a wholesaler, not for Carter's branded item, of course, but there's lots of children wholesale clothing companies that are out there. And you can buy from them and you can create your own listings and you don't have to worry too much about people being on them. Yeah. Uh, what percentage uh, of your inventory is bundles? And what is the rest? And what do you do? Wholesale, online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, a little bit of everything? A little bit of everything. I will say the majority of the listings in my account I have created, whether they are standalone, single item or bundles. The majority of my Amazon account is that today, you know, in it right now. Um, going into the summer months, I will probably have a 50-50 of bundles and like retail arbitrage type of things. Um, just because due to the the season uh, throughout the year, summer tends to be a slower period for me. Um, so it, it ebbs and flows throughout the year. But currently, most of my listings are my own creation. Uh, how do you source items for your bundles? I am now mostly online shopping. That began during the shutdown. Before that, I was mostly going to stores and had wholesale accounts. And I was doing a lot of retail arbitrage. Once everything had shut down, I continued with my wholesalers that I could get inventory from. But I really switched to learning how to shop online and realized how much I liked that better than going in the stores once I got the hang of it. 
Talking about wholesales, what do you like? Do you come to idea first and then look for wholesales, or you opposite find wholesales first and then comes to the ideas? Both. I do What's both. Your... Let's say we're doing that back to school item. I said like the folders and the notebook. Sometimes that starts off as an idea. I know that I want to do that. So then I may start looking for who is carrying it now when it's not quite yet back to school season. They're not in the stores yet. So then I may just start Googling it, you know, children's uh, character, children's branded school supplies. And then I might do the word uh, school supplies distributor, school supplies wholesaler, and see what kind of things come up in the Google search result. Sometimes I've simply found my wholesalers that way. Sometimes, um, uh, You'll find, I always have my little composition book here, on the back of other product, you'll see the company, who it yeah, is from, right? And I may search them and see, is there a wholesale buying opportunity there? And sometimes maybe I'll go to sites like Oriental Trading or, you know, that have inexpensive items and I will find them that way. Sometimes it starts off with an idea and then I look, where can I get it? Other times I start off with a wholesaler Maybe I've now found uh, a wholesaler for school supplies. Now let me look through my new wholesaler that I just got and see what they have. And then I may start looking at what they have and what's online and, and, and researching it that way. So I don't think that one way is better than the other. I think they're both equally as great. Or mixing them might even be a good idea. So people don't really make the same bundle. Absolutely. I love mixing vendors. Uh-huh. I definitely mix vendors. Sometimes I have my more expensive item from a vendor and I might find something to pair with it, you know, at a local dollar store. Um, so it would be a more obscure, hard to find item. Just yeah. You have to advertise the bundle. Yeah. What happens after you did the bundle? How do you get it up in its feet? Because nobody will be searching exactly for the name. Do you have to advertise it? Some of my bundles, I don't advertise at all. And they sell like within getting to Amazon. So recently I had made a few bundles actually geared for summertime. And I sent them in now just because Amazon check-in times are a mystery. Sometimes things are available right away. Sometimes I swear things stay back for a couple of months before they're active. Ooh. And I was so surprised that I nearly sold out of some of my summer bundles that I sent in early over this last month. And I didn't do any advertising. They just sold. Um, so that's a matter of selling keywords is what I say. You know, if I know Batman is going to be popular and I created a bundle with the word Batman in it, and it's, you know, if it was the Batman school supplier or, or Easter, like, we'll use that since we had Easter. And I made a Batman themed Easter boys, you know, Easter basket, that theme. People are already searching Batman and Easter. So you're really selling the keyword. And you can oftentimes come up without even having advertised. So sometimes I don't advertise at all. Um other times I do have to advertise, you know, of course, I think all my ideas are great or I wouldn't have bought them and made the listing and sent them in if I didn't think they were great. And sometimes you find out it wasn't great because I'm not selling this bundle at all, despite like fixing it. Sometimes I pulled the bundle back out, you know, after it was there too many months and got it back home and just stared at it. Like, what is wrong with this? Like, why, you know, and I have to try to find a, maybe a way to rework it. So sometimes they're not all winners and um, it happens. And so then that one is one I may have to advertise a lot. And, and sometimes that gets going and, and it sells. Sometimes despite my advertising efforts, my keyword effort, it just never, it, it just never was a winner. And, and that happens as well. It's just that you want it to be a lot of winners and very few that happen this way. But it, it, if someone tells you otherwise, they're lying to you. Um, we all have some bundles or listings that just didn't make it. Or Amazon asked us to take off that actually the keyword that worked because it's <laughs> marks in my keys. Amazon so. is getting increasingly <laughs> more um, strict with what they allow, especially with branded things. I recently was hit for using the word Marvel in a listing. Um, 
even though my item was a Marvel Avengers item, I had to remove that. I've had to remove Mickey Mouse. I've had to remove Disney. And these were words that Amazon never had issues with prior, even though that's what those items were. And I bought them wholesale from authorized distributors. Amazon still will not allow it. And um, this has become increasingly harder. However, I will tell you, I have still been able to successfully sell those bundles, even though I had to remove the best keyword out of it. By using advertising, right? Sometimes and sometimes no. Let's say hi, Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. How are you today? I am am good. How are you guys? Uh, um, Lucy, how did you start selling on Amazon and how did you start doing bundles and what years was it? Uh, I started in Amazon in 2015 and it was because I kept getting laid off from jobs and I was just done. I was, I was mentally and physically done with trying to go through and and get hired and stay on and give 110%. And then, you know, jobs would close up within two years and I was just done. I was, uh, done. So I said, if I'm going to work that hard, I'm going to do it for myself. And then I started in books, worked my way into the other categories, learned all of that, did a lot of retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, and then started going into wholesale, which led me into bundles because wholesale doing wholesale is is difficult in of itself. Um, you can make some mistakes, some bigger mistakes in purchasing, and, and then they cost a lot. And then uh, really been liking the bundles the last few years, making those and doing those. You just have less competition. Margins are better. You work with wholesalers. I've I've liked everything about that so far. Because it's more creative. You get your creative juices flowing. I, I could care less about creative. No, <laughs> I care about the, I, I'm not I'm not super creative, but I I do see. Okay, you know, if you put X with Y, people like to buy that, and I know that because that's what I like to buy. You get at things, and I'm like, okay, I need whatever. You're doing a birthday party, okay? You need plates and forks and knives and this and that. So putting just common sense items together makes sense. Yes. It does it save time or does it save money? So if one of them or even better, both of them work. Exactly. And I got frustrated because you'd look online and nobody sells a set of eight plates and makes any money off of it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just not ever going to be profitable, but you put things together and the margins start looking really good. And you're like, oh, okay. So it's a little bit of groundwork up front, but once it starts selling, you can usually replen it and then you make more money off of each one. How many ladies, like usually how many items in your bundle? Is it like a magic number or it depends? It's like two, three, four. I don't think there's a magic number. Sometimes just two of something is fine. And sometimes you want to have many things in there. I don't know. Do you, what do you think, Tina? I like, well, look. As you know, because we we you know each other's bundles most of the time, but I feel like I have a sweet spot a lot of times with three items. But like Lucy says, sometimes there's two, sometimes there's more. Uh, it just really depends what the bundle is. But I, I I feel like three is my sweet spot for some reason. I do I do like threes just because I like the prime numbers. But <laughs> honestly, sometimes you just got to keep it simple. Like we could sit here, we could overcomplicate bundles all day long. You know, you're thinking of back to school and you're like, oh, okay, I'll do a backpack and a lunch meal. Next thing you know, you've got 23 other items in there and, you know, you run in with suppliers not being able to have, you know, they run out of something or, you know, they. And then it can get too expensive, you know, when you add it all up together. And as you know, Amazon's fees are everly, you know, increasing more and more. So if you put together a backpack and a lunchbox and a thermos, you know, your buy cost at this point might be $30. And it's like, how much do you have to charge on Amazon to even make $15 profit off the yeah. 30 buy cost? It then can become outrageous. And that's where sometimes maybe just selling the backpack all by itself is the better option. Yeah. yeah. And I always think of, of the customer. What does the customer want? What do they, what do they need? Are they looking to have a birthday party with 12 people or are they looking just to send a gift to somebody that's out of town to their second cousin that they don't really, they don't really care. They just want it to look nice. You know, we all have those gifts that are 
just presentation. They look pretty and you, you click and send because you need to send a wedding gift or a birthday gift or a whatever gift. And you just want to have something that looks nice. Um, you know, what is the application for it? Mm -hmm. What do you consider to be a successful bundle? And uh, let's say like how much time you put into that time and money, right? If you do advertising until you give up. And just say, oh, this is not profitable. I'm not going to continue to do that. Or, and what is like, oh, this is, this is work. What is your amount and time? Where does your patience end? You want to answer first, Tina? Well, no, go ahead. Because I already talked like 30 minutes before you jumped on. So by all means, my friend. Yeah, sorry for I'm, being happy. I'm um, curious about both opinions, tr truly. Yeah. Uh, it's my my bundles, I I kind of classify them in different realms. I have evergreen bundles, seasonal bundles, and then like I'll just say a garbage bundle. And my evergreen bundles, obviously you want them to sell all year round. And ideally I'd like to sell 20 or more a month. And I would like to make at least three dollars or more on each of those. If I can continue to to build those repeatable evergreen bundles. Now you've got a business model that you can scale, grow, and, and have labor for. My seasonal bundles, I kind of want them to go in, peak, and then sell out, ideally like two days before the event. So we'll say Father's Day, whatever day that is, I'd want to sell out of all my Father's Day bundles two days before that because that's a very small time. Same goes for Christmas. You know, if I could sell out right around uh, December 22nd of all my Christmas and, and Christmas stuff, that would be amazing. My And I'll call them garbage bundles because it is things that are either reworked or I got for dirt cheap. And I'm not going to be able to replenish them. So let's say you go to the store and you pick up whatever Easter peeps on super duper clearance. You get them for a nickel a piece or 10 cents a piece. And you're just trying to rework those or mix them into something else to get the product gone. Because we all have products that don't sell, right? We all have something that didn't sell. You have to have an exit it's always for it. Yeah. So, so what's your exit strategy for that product? You either got it for really good or it's a return of some sort or it, it just didn't work out. And Tina and I will either, um, we either break apart those bundles and we'll sell the individuals or we'll group them up and make a different bundle. And or sometimes you have to order like with one vendor, you have to order 96 and with the other, you have to order 72. So what do you do with those extra 20 products? You know, we've um, we've grouped things up and sold them towards. Let's say you had uh, pencils and you normally were selling a couple packs of pencils targeting the back of school. And now you've got whatever, 25 packs of pencils. What do you do with 25 packs of pencils? You know, throw them together and, and target the birthday parties or target Halloween for non-candy gifts or target your Christmas stocking or target teachers that need to buy a larger quantity, something like that, and, and rework them into that. So for those bundles, it's like if I can get my capital back and a little bit extra, perfect. I, you know, get it gone, get it sold, get it out of my hair, get it out of my office. I don't want to see it again. For the seasonals, I definitely want to make 50% ROI or better and uh, not spend a whole lot of time doing them. I'm not going to get very crazy complicated on a, on a seasonal bundle. For my evergreen bundles, that's where we take the time and we will make custom things. We will make uh, have artwork done. We will have something customly done or put the time and effort into those because they're going to be seasonal. They're worth the wait. They're worth the effort. And they might back the next season too. So you, it's not just this year. Well, we seasonals can't come back. back. Yeah. Or might not. Is it possible they sell this season, but they don't not sell in the next one? Um, a lot of my seasonals are going to include food or candy or something like that. You know, you think of the big seasons, Easter, chocolate. You got to have chocolate for Easter, right? Or chocolate or jelly beans or something like that. Or eggs. Heaps. We yeah. have like a bunch left over from my something. not well doing. Girls. For Halloween, Halloween usually has quite a bit of candy associated with it. And same with... um. With Christmas, with other ones, I mean, yeah, it, it can come back next year for sure, but you never know what you're going to be able to get next year in terms of what your suppliers have. Yeah, so what I found is that um, now everything is like before and after, you know, the shutdown. So it would be that 
now what we've ran into is that last year I maybe created a bundle for Easter candy and it did well. So this year I was going to sell on the listing. I already did the work for last year because the same candy comes out every year, but now they've changed the ounces on the bag. So oh, no. what used to be a 12 ounce bag. Now Walmart and all the stores only make it in nine ounce bags. So, you know, this has been new problems. Uh, and in the past, these weren't the problems because it was always the same ounce of bags, you know, pretty much the same price that came out every year. But we have all been um, really challenged ever since our shutdown and with things changing in, in so many ways with Amazon and a lot of their changes fee changes, even our sources, now changing packaging size, quantities, prices. So anybody who is still sticking it out with Amazon right now um, is fighting a lot harder than we used to have to fight in the past. But yes, you can redo your bundle. You're just going to now have to remake it, but with the new size packaging, right? You just have to find a way to pivot. But like Lucy said, when you had asked then of when do you give up and her pencil analogy was perfectly sought on. And so after then we, we would have uh, then tried it for teachers and parties and the non-candy thing. After you tried doing that, if you sold out of them, great. Sometimes you've now found a new winning listing or an idea. And this is sometimes how you now know I can sell uh, pencils for back to school and Halloween or it, so it's like now you have all kinds of listings you can make or they didn't sell that way. And now now that's when I've given up. Now that's when I just donate it and call it a loss. So it either turns out to be a really great win for you or this is when you know, move on, Mary. <laughs> and so Ellie, to um, tell you about your Easter egg. I learned years ago on accident. See, sometimes my great listings are because of an accident. This happens too. So what I like to do is when I pull inventory out after a season is over. So for you, Easter is over now because we are now a couple or the day after Easter. So with it being the day after Easter, if you had this inventory at Amazon, you know, you're going to pull it out within the next Jesus. week. Keep it up as a merchant fulfilled listing because I have found that you can sell seasonal stuff all year long, even when it's not the season. And the, se the second best selling season for Easter stuff for me has been Christmas. I sell Easter things during Christmas. I've never understood it. And I always sell a lot of Easter eggs during Christmas when I've had them. Um, so I found that out on accident. So parents can already have the candy, uh, the sticker and the eggs to go together as a bundle. Find a way to, well, if it didn't sell like this, how can I make it different? The, the, the supplies I already have because you've already bought them, right? You've already paid for them. So this is when you want to say, how can I rework them? Yes, absolutely. I will also just have the item come back and and redo it from scratch because sometimes your things get messed up you get mm -hmm. stuck in fulfillment transfer you get stuck in receiving your browse nodes get get kibosh for whatever reason you know you have something go down and bundles really have their their highlight for the first 30 days and if you miss that window um sometimes it's hard to get them relaunched outside of that that window of 30 days so just redoing it Mm -hmm. And changing things up has been helpful too. Yes, absolutely. And delete the old listing. And and in your case, let's say all, maybe your list, and I don't know your listing, of course, but let's say your listing was just for some plastic Easter eggs that were the typical pastel colors. That just doesn't stand out. But were they dinosaur Easter eggs? Were they, you know, were they Easter eggs that were really something special? Super Heber Easter eggs were, you know, that. Where, did they have great keywords behind them? And if they were just the plain old pastel eggs, well, you're lost in a sea of a whole bunch of Easter eggs. That's not anything that's real compelling to, to sell. But if they are just plain pastel Easter eggs, can you now pair them with some cute girl princess Easter item that you may find next year or some really cool special different Easter bunny that's maybe different than the traditional Easter bunny and find a way to incorporate it and make something really cool out of it. Yeah, so they can stand out next year. 
We have to spend more time in the bundle group, which is amazing. Tell us a little bit about that. I don't think it was intended to just be bundles when Lucy and I spoke about doing this. And and perhaps we should market it differently because we teach more than just bundles. Definitely. There's yeah, nothing um, in the face of <laughs> Yeah, it, it definitely is much deeper than that. And so we should probably rebrand what we call it, to be honest with you. Especially if it's going forever, right? It doesn't have like the ending time. It's right. a unique course. It's Yeah, a... because we try to pivot with the ever-changing rules of Amazon. Yeah. That's, that's the main problem with all the courses, because sometimes people show something and even interface looks different. I'm like, is it Amazon? And uh, uh, yeah. and a lot of things changing all the time, that's for sure. I was asking Tina today, I'm like, they've changed where the buttons are when you go to list a product. Last week, about mid last week, they changed. And now like keywords is over here and your item description, the like the title is over here. And I'm going, why did we change the tabs? What was right. the point to change? It? Yeah. And it's not for all of them. It's just for some categories. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Very frustrating. But yeah, they're always changing the buttons. They're always adding improvements. And then yeah, the improvements yeah, yeah. are not necessarily improvements. Um, I was on the phone with Seller Central a few days ago, and I talked about this in the bundle group. But And I was telling them, we were working through a flat file issue. And I said, Why, why'd you all start hiding tabs? That's super annoying. Like, I need to find the tabs, and the errors are on the tabs that are in. And he goes, oh, yeah, that was a new upgrade. Why are we doing this upgrade? There's so many things to upgrade. Mm -hmm. And hiding tabs was not, hiding hiding cells are not it in a flat file. <laughs> you know, like, it took a I while. To different I'm going, where did it go? Where did it go? I'm looking like the floor is really short. And then I look up and I'm like, oh, why are we hiding tabs? You know, hiding the columns. So just frustrating. Very frustrating. So tell us about your program, what you do in this group. Like, what is the step-by-step -step and how you teach? Tell us more. I mean, we know because we are in the group, but like for someone who is we watching, don't know. yes. Tina, are you answering? Oh, I, I yeah, I feel like I talked so much in the beginning. I oh. want you to have a chance to speak. Yes, I don't care. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be hogging. Please. Um. So we we hemmed and hawed a lot about how to present it because a lot of courses are just standard. You play a video, you download a sheet, and you follow along, right? That's how I've seen most courses. And we tried to go that route. And after a couple of months, I'm like, I can't do this. This is ridiculous. I filmed this one video and two weeks later, it's outdated because of whatever changes. So now my screen doesn't look right. And I don't want to go back and try to edit and try to update, try to update, try to update. So we came up with a different structure, and what we have is we have a Google spreadsheet that has all the topics on it, and then it has links to the video about that topic, and then it has any downloadables. So we have, like, step-by-step -step guides or, I don't know, whatever, whatever other downloadables that could be on there. So you could literally go and watch the one about how to do SEO research or how to file your trademark or how to do the brand registration and just watch that video, and then at the bottom... We have kind of, kind of my, my favorite area is all of the issues. So as I come across uh, 5461 errors, 8440 errors, any of those errors or issues or glitches that Amazon has, we are recording like, here's the issue and here's how to fix it. When everybody got bogged down with generic listings, um, things like that, flat file walkthroughs when you have an error in your flat file, what to do and how to fix it. Then we have other tabs that have uh, like words to stay away from or words that could possibly get you flagged and some other resources there. But along with this, we're also going in the Facebook group and answering questions. So if you have questions, if you need your bundle looked over or if you are, you know, whatever question you have, you can either pose it to the group or DM us and if it's something private, private. Uh, and then going live in the bundle group, in the Facebook group, both in like hangout style or sometimes just a live stream to get people, it. Yeah, give people <laughs> a chance to like, hey, I'm working on this or what do you think of this or how do you like the new change? I mean, we've been talking about the inventory lab API feeds in all the groups because that's kind of the big headache of the week. Uh, I'm hoping they get that fixed soon. But uh uh, allowing us to do videos on the fly or updates on the fly is is 
to me, the most valuable information because, I mean, I could show you how to do the listing, but in three months when you have a certain air, what are you going to do? Who are you going to reach out to? Yeah, the problem that there are a lot of information on YouTube and you can follow, but then something doesn't go as it's supposed to go and then you're stuck. And it's it's a really good opportunity to ask you guys. We've either, we've either ran into it ourselves and so we will know how to fix it or we haven't run into it and um, we, we do our best to find out how to fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. How to accelerate the case to somebody that actually mm -hmm. knows what's going yeah. on. The other day, Lucy was saying about tombstoning, you know, all the jargons with Amazon. Like, Yeah, tombstoning at UPC. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of acronyms and, and secret Amazon language and, and knowing how to answer Amazon's questions. You know, when you open a case and Amazon doesn't like your answer and then they're asking you for something that you feel like, oh, well, I already told you that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a way that you, it's the game you have to play with Amazon, the way you have to rephrase it and reword it and to get that yes from them or get them to help you solve your issue. Exactly. Um, how many yeah. bundles do you have in your inventory and how many do you create uh, monthly or weekly? I've done about 20 this week between this oh. About time of year it is. Christmas, there's going to be a ton of them. You know, right now I know Lucy's gearing up for, you know, some of the other things coming up, like Mother's Day, Father's Day, back to school. There's a lot of, there's a lot of really quick um, seasonal type of holidays that are coming up. So, but then in the middle of summer, there might not be a lot of bundle action going on, but it's going to be looking ahead and thinking about shopping for Christmas. So while we're doing just some regular evergreen replans all summer, we're looking ahead at like, okay, what are we going to do for Halloween, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas? And we're looking at our wholesalers and putting together bundles on a Google sheet of like, well, this is what we think we want to do and start pricing them out. Um, in, in the summer. So we're usually planning the holidays in the middle of summer. Yeah. And, and I'm just busy this week because I had a bunch show up from ASD. When we were at ASD, we picked mm -hmm. out a bunch of stuff and it kind of, it, I don't know why, but it all seemed to arrive last week. And um, mine had already arrived a lot sooner than Lucy. So I have two bundles in my office I have to do this week. And um, I have two more I need to do once we get some photos from our suppliers. So I really have four I need to do. And I have about three items that were my failures from last year that I have pulled out of the closet that I've got to figure out how am I going to rework them this year and sell them. Mm -hmm. And I've been working on what you said. I've got Mother's Day, Father's Day, graduation are kind of my big ones. I've got a couple back to school trickling in now. So back to school is next. And then uh, after back to school, it's going to be Halloween. So probably in another couple of weeks here, I'll turn focus to what my plan is for Halloween. And the big question of candy, are you going to ship it out on the 15th or try to merchant fulfill or try to go without candy for Halloween for those bundles? Yeah, yeah because if you send it on the 15th, it's like it just doesn't get there in time. You can't how 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 do you guarantee that it's there to sell it for people to have it by the 31st when there's only a two-week window? It's just almost impossible. So the dirty little underline is you can source candy that's more hard. Think Tootsie Pop yeah. or something that's not going to melt. Meltable. And you pair it with things that aren't in that food category and then you can send it in early because it's not going to be under the food category. Yeah, living in yeah. Florida. Sometimes you don't even know the weather. One of the items, it's meltable, let's say. Does the bundle automatically get under the meltable? You, yes. as the owner of the listing, tell Amazon whether it's meltable or not. But with that being said, if customers complain that it got melted, then they will go and reclassify. And I don't know it's impossible, but it's probably nearly impossible to get that decision reversed. So you wouldn't want to be like chocolate candy bars or anything. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking like licorice. You said the Tootsie Rolls, which yeah, those would be both classified as meltables. Right. But say you had those with a bag, you know, a trick-or-treat bag or or something like that. You can then put the whole bundle listing. You either got to put it under the bag category or the candy category. 
And ideally, you'd want to put it under the candy category and then mark it as not meltable and, and do that route. But you could put it under the bag category and they will reclassify you eventually. But, you know, we're talking about a short period of time here. You, you ship on maybe October 1st, get it in there so you can hit it up. And you also don't want to send things that are clearly going to melt. Like you don't want your customers to be upset. But there's been times where it's like, OK, come on now. It really isn't. Like Easter was really early this year, right? So my Easter things that were questionable, I didn't put a multiple date on there so that I could sell them to, you know, the end of the month and get rid of them. Even though, I don't know, some of the things I feel like if you did put in a hot truck in the middle of Florida, maybe they would come out a little wonky. That's my pain. Yeah. (laughs) I can only do uh, Valentine's Day. I I don't risk it with chocolate. Yeah. Well, that's because, yeah, you live there. Me, I'm just thinking of the truck and and a couple of the states that would be very questionable. I don't I don't really ship any meltables no matter what, like June, July, August. I kind of mainly July, August, even for merchant to fill, I cut back significantly on that because I've had some people, you know, are in Florida and they want chocolates in the middle of July. I'm like, no, no go to the store, go, go to Walmart. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many ice packs I put in there. If you leave it out on the porch for two days, it's going to melt. Not during the summer. Right. I don't either. Yeah, there, there's a lot of candy that's in that gray area. You think Skittles, Skittles, licorice, red vines, popsicles, um, all of that. I have looked up the meltable statistics candles. of it, and it, yeah, candles, and it should be up here. And I swear, sometimes the trucks are up in that area, and it's. It's well without, a, you know, outside of Amazon, I think it's 165, they say, that you need to do. And it's like, oh, okay, the red vines, they melt at 185. I'm good, right? Yeah. No, I've it had some things. Things like deodorant, chapsticks, yeah. you know, things yeah. like this can also melt. Yep. Yeah, I grew up in Vegas. We had, uh, my favorite was if you left the, <laughs> age myself, from Blockbuster, if you left the VCR thing in the car it would totally melt yeah 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 yeah. i have this all the time <laughs> from my car Learn real quick not to leave makeup in the car you don't leave lotion yeah. you don't leave anything in a bottle because when you open it all yeah, over yeah. the place mm-hmm. so if you have interest to join the bundle groups uh the link will be in the description and if you have any questions you can message tina or lucy or both And thank you, ladies, for coming today. It was very helpful and interesting. And I think that's another way of making money on Amazon, which is becoming more and more competitive every single year. And that's, it's not that competitive yet in bundles. Thank you for having us. (laughs) We'll see. Thank you, Tina. Have a good day.